Hey, I'm Melanie Fay, and I teach with Lesson Face. If you're at the point where you've already learned all your open chords, and you've already learned, you know, how to recognize the difference between major and minor, and you've already uh, learned a few songs, and you know, you're pretty comfortable moving up and down the fretboard, then I think you should start looking into learning the number system because it'll make you more independent as a musician. You can really play music in any setting. Like you could play live with a band that you've never rehearsed with. If they just tell you the numbers and the keys of the song, you know, you can figure out a song on the fly if you just understand the numbers behind it. The number system is just a way of organizing music. So basically, what it is is just instead of thinking of the notes as letter names, instead of thinking of it as like, for example, like D or C sharp, you think of the notes as numbers. Everything starts with the C major scale, and I'm just using C as a reference because it's it has no flats and sharps, so it's just easy to remember. You th instead of thinking of it as C D E F G A B C, you think of it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one again. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one again. Usually I learn songs by ear, or I almost always learn songs by ear, but what made that possible was understanding the number system. Basically, how you would learn a song, you figure out the key first, then you figure out the root note, the bass note of each chord, and then from there you use the number system to figure out what chord that is. Because the bass note is the number, that's the number. So if, if, it's, uh, if you're in the key of C and you're going D, G, C over and over again, then the chord progression would be two, five, one. Two, five, one. In like a pop context, you know, it could sound something like, um, So basically when you learn the number system, it helps you to understand the different patterns of the chord structure and therefore you can transpose it to any key or learn any song in any key without having to be confused by sharps and flats and having to understand the different letter names. It's just always one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another example could be um, two, five, one, seven, three, six, which is like a very standard gospel chord progression. I, I started playing guitar because of Guitar Hero 3. I was really fascinated by the song Cliffs of Dover. That song made me want to play guitar. That was like my favorite song off Guitar Hero. But I start I grew up on like R&B music though. I grew up on like, you know, soul and R&B and hip hop and stuff. But I would say being that I studied jazz guitar in high school and college. So my, I have like a jazz background, but the thing is like R&B chords are jazz chords. And then like certain elements of Eric Johnson's playing are jazz ideas. And then, you know, gospel chords are also jazz chords. You know, a lot of uh, genres are uh, based in jazz. That's like the foundation for a lot of modern genres. A lot of the times when I'm playing lead guitar, um, I'm really not trying to 
emulate like a guitar player. I'm more so approaching the melody in the way a singer would. For example, a line like, That's like all mimicking like a singer because I grew up on like R&B music. So like that's kind of like mimicking the way like a melismatic, like soulful singer would sing. So. It's, um, it's not really intended to like sound like I'm trying to be like a, you know, in your face, like lead shreddy guitar player. It's just like mimicking uh, a voice. So you can be inspired by different things that aren't necessarily guitar, you know, and that can really open a lot of doors for you and make you a much more versatile musician. And it can make your sound a lot more unique if you approach guitar in, a, in an unconventional sort of way.